So, uh, yeah, the institutions, endowments, foundations have been in this space of uh, alternative investments for the last 30, 40, in some cases, 50 years. Uh, some of those positions are now becoming available to retail investors. In fact, uh, let's let's talk about one for a minute, one that I like a lot, and that would be one that holds uh, both uh, student housing, right? You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, Wall Street is crumbling before your very eyes. Is it time to take the quick exit out? I'm talking about jumping out the window and uh, letting the rest work itself out. Or is there hope? Do we hold on? Is it going to be just a dip and a brief crash, which is what we've experienced uh, so many times in the past for the last 40 years, just about since 1987? So I take it back 37 years. John Grace is with us now. John, always great to have you on. Your take on the current crash, is it, trans- I'll, I'll use Fed speak, is it, uh, is it transitive or right. is, it, uh, is it a trend? Well, I mean, uh, no one can see the future, right? And, and I think the best way to put it is uh, preparation from uh, uh, prediction, all right? So- let go of trying to predict what's going to happen when and uh, see what you can do to be ready. And you know what, Carrie, we should really learn from the animals. <laughs> Notice what the animals don't do when there's a flood or a hurricane. They don't say, hey, Carrie, I'm going to ride this one out. They go uh, and they don't look at the prettiest or the best dress or the one with the biggest house. They look to the smartest animals and they go to higher ground. <laughs> so my point is don't drown, turn around, turn your assets around and figure out what your exit strategy is. because. Who knows if this is just the beginning, if it's just going to blow over. Everybody wants to be optimistic and say, well, we just know this will blow over, keep buying the dips. But, you know, sometimes things turn awry very quickly, and now it's how low can we go? So to our way of thinking, rather than try and predict what might happen, because you could just be right or wrong either way you cut it, how do you prepare so that you can survive and thrive no matter what happens, whether it's in Washington, D.C. or the economy or around the world? And the one-two punch that we advocate, Carrie, is active management, number one, and greater diversification, number two. So active management simply looks like most, uh, by comparison, most uh, investment accounts, mutual funds, exchange-traded funds, keep the portfolio 5% cash, 95% invested. So in a 2009 or 2023, that was terrific. But 2008 and 2022, 2022, not so much. In 2008, markets off 37. Many of the passive all stock portfolios were off over 40% in that calendar year. And then here comes 2022, markets off uh, 20 to 30%. Uh, so that's what, the, that's what the indexes did. For those who had uh, their portfolios strategically uh, set up so that we limit the losses as opposed to insult you by saying, Jerry, you have to live with the losses. No, let's not stay static, 5% cash, 95% invested. In fact, let's see what we need to do on a daily basis to answer this question. Is it risk on or risk off? In 08, systematically throughout 2008, you wanted to take shares off the table, off the Titanic. And what I mean is you didn't move from this stock to that stock or this bond to that bond. That's kind of like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. The ship sank. We don't want that to happen. So let's move out of risk assets and into cash, risk off. And in some cases, clients started 08, 5% cash, but into the end of 2008, 50%, 70%, sometimes 100% cash. That, that, by that way of working, we can see the evidence that these folks who went that route we're off no more than, uh, l- actually less than 20% in 2008. Again, the market 37, the index funds over 40. So, you know, and it took a year or two to get back to even, whereas the passive accounts took 
four to five years to get back to even. So we're going to suggest that we do what we can to limit the losses, again, through active management. And number two is greater diversification. And, and let me ask you this, Carrie, uh, in terms of greater diversification to kind of get some sense of what that looks like. Uh, if you were looking at the Yale endowment, uh, $40.7 billion, if I'm not mistaken, uh, what do you imagine? You don't need to know because, again, it's I think it's a good conversation to have. Yale might have as a percentage in U.S. stocks. Um, I would say two thirds. Two thirds. OK, yeah, I, I think. See, the securities industry has encouraged all of us, no matter what we're trying to do, to think in terms of making big bets. Forty percent bonds, 60 percent stocks, two thirds mm-hmm. stocks. Those are big bets. What what blows my mind every time I look and we, we they, Yale does a report about once a year. And they're and they're pretty. Uh, uh, they describe a lot about what they used to do in the '80s and how they're not doing that anymore. In the '80s, it was a, a portfolio that was yeah, like 75 percent U.S. stocks, bonds, and cash. Today, it's less than 10 percent U.S. stocks. Really? And a year ago, yeah, when I was looking for the details, all I could find was three percent of 40.7 billion dollars in U.S. stocks. I mean, that's that's like nothing, right? Well, I mean, right. 40 billion, that's a whole lot, but it's not 30%, it's not 40%, okay? So we can't do what the uh, major endowments do, but we can learn from the best and the brightest. And I think one of the things we can learn is that uh, we have more legs under our portfolio stool that makes for a, a firmer sit <laughs> for your life savings, as opposed to being on two legs, which can wobble and break. You got four or five legs under that portfolio, and now you're probably in a position where you 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 might yield a bit, but you won't break, and, and that's what we want, right? We want to bounce, not break. So again, yeah, it's uh, active management and greater diversification outside of traditional asset classes that we think are are the answer, no matter how this market turns. Okay, so where is uh, Yale putting their money if it's not in the stock market? <laughs> well. Uh, let's see. You, you, it's like last I looked, uh, it's about 4% uh, to bonds, uh, about uh, 10% to cash. Uh, they like alternative investments uh, like credit programs and uh, real estate investment trusts. Uh, they, they, they are pretty well diversified. So it's, uh, and, and I'm not saying this is not a template. You see what I'm saying? I mean, in other words, we're not, right. some people say, oh, is this what you do with their clients? No, we can't. We're, we're retail investors. We, we don't have yeah. the kind of Can't capability that. that they have. And they think of their funds as perpetual. We don't, right? So they, they're, they're, they're doing a lot with the money. Uh, we can't do exactly what they can do. But all I'm saying is the majority of us get overly uh, comfortable. We become smugly complacent, really, in the <laughs> favorite stock that you like, yeah. the bond that you like, too much cash, you 60% of your portfolios in, in real estate. Uh, so what I'm saying is, you know, there's there's no uh, there's no Bible. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. The question is, what's your way and uh, figure out how to know what you own and and also make sure that you have some uh, defensive strategies in your portfolio. Every team has offense and defense. Mm-hmm. The Olympics are going on. They've got to have both, whatever the game they're playing. So as investors, most of us are very offensive looking for all those gains. What do we have uh, in our bag of tricks, if you will? Uh, that will keep our, uh, our losses limited so that we don't need a Hail Mary pass just to get back in the game. Yeah, well, in times like these, you got to be more concerned about uh, return of capital or return of investment than rather than return on investment, right? I couldn't agree more. And, and you know, if we can learn from some history, Kerry, we can look at two examples, one being the, the, the U.S. after the Great Depression and the other one being Japan, right? Uh, many of us know with the Great Depression, well, first we started the 20s right as the Roaring Twenties and then ended with the Great Depression. Well, that's quite a quite a decade, right? Uh, many people do know that uh, uh, stocks were off about 80, 85 percent of the yeah. Great Depression. Uh, what many people don't know is that it took 20, 25 years to get back to even, assuming this is you before. You stayed in. Yeah, you, you stayed in 100 percent. You did not sell a share. You didn't need any money for 20, 25 years. Now, <laughs> who do you know who doesn't need any money for 20, 25 years? And then New York real estate, about a year later, uh, the capital of capitalism, right? New York City dropped 70 yeah. percent. And the realtors, oh, it always comes back. Yes, it did. That only took uh, 40 years. That's right. 
four decades. Okay, so stocks took 2025, 20, New York real estate took 40, and the average age of death at that time, if we were adults, was 57. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, you see what's happening here. Neither the stocks nor your real estate in New York got back to Eva while you were still here. So that means you you died with regret. And 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 guess what? The same thing is happening with Japan. The mm -hmm. There's the Nikkei 225, 12, 89, peaked, dropped 80% in about 22 months or so. A year later, Japanese real estate, sound familiar? Yeah, dropped 70%. Sure. Okay. And I love to ask which one's back to even <laughs> for, for, a, for a long time. The question, the answer was neither. From what I can tell, it looks like both the Nikkei in Japan and the uh, residential real estate market has finally recovered. But let's see. <laughs> you 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 placed that bet 35 years ago or those bets right and yeah. and you Inflation. took 35 years yeah just to get back to where you were so so you were 35 then 40 right and now you're 70 75 i mean really i and that and that's my point <laughs> you know it may not come back fast enough so l let's take the time to figure out how to limit our losses yeah hey well you know uh, risk management as an individual investor is really your most important job. And it's something that most of you out there know the least about, right? This is true. We're, yeah, we get, I like to say, Carrie, we get high on the hopium, right? Wherever I throw the darts, as long as it goes up in value, then see how smart I was. Any questions? Might have been better with the darts uh, this time around, huh? <laughs> so non-traditional investments, uh, you think are going to be the place to be for the foreseeable future? I do. I actually believe that's uh, investor salvation. And and the interesting thing is for retail investors, that sounds new. Uh, you know, it might be kind of like you have a 30-year-old car. It doesn't have electric mm -hmm. windows. Now you can't buy a car without electric windows, right? Automatic yeah. windshield wipers, right? Just work for you. like Sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the institutions, endowments, foundations have been in this space of uh, alternative investments for the last 30, 40, in some cases, 50 years. Uh, some of those positions are now becoming available to retail investors. In fact, uh, let's, let's talk about one for a minute, one that I like a lot, and that would be one that holds uh, both uh, student housing, right? We have clients, uh, he's a rocket scientist, she's a broker. They own property near USC. They tell me that uh, USC has 8,000 rental units with a waiting list of 40,000 people. Wow. Yeah. So many people were paying money every month to keep their kids room during COVID when the kid was at home. <laughs> so I liken this kind of investment as a cash cow. And a lot of the schools are moving out of the owning and the management of residential properties, transferring mm -hmm. that responsibility to companies. So now you have the company that does the work as opposed to the school that gets the blame. Uh, so right. yeah, I, I do I do like that space. The other piece of the puzzle I like a lot is uh, data center infrastructure. Uh, that's the 300,000 square foot buildings that I'm not even sure they have a bathroom because, <laughs> yes. you know, everything's electronic and you have all of this uh, technology has to work 24-7, 365 with three or four systems back up without water, by the way, outside of California uh, that are just going to keep chugging along. So again, to me, this looks like uh, something that will hold up no matter what happens happens in D.C., what happens with the economy, both here and around the world. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Hey, so what about AI? Now, we talked about data centers. Yeah. Is there another way to play AI that might be even more advantageous? Well, I don't, you know, the only way you're going to know it's, it was more advantageous is when, after the fact, right? <laughs> so yeah. I, I can't, I don't foresee that. I don't, I don't foresee what might be more advantageous. I would say if you're, you know, in a, uh, a stock, for example, uh, that's probably more exciting. And if you like excitement, then uh, uh, any one of your uh, stocks that uh, feature work and mm -hmm. intelligence is is going to be, um, you know, well, we watch we watch those stocks just like we watched the tech stocks back in 2000. All right. They were the ones that ran off to the moon and had separation. In other words, it was, you know, 10 mm -hmm. at that time. It's about seven stocks this time. Uh, but what you're looking for or what we should be seeing is breath. 
that's with a D, right? Where you've got uh, whatever the index is, 500 stocks with the S&P, uh, the Dow's 30, you, the, the, but the top seven, you don't like the top seven separating from the rest of the, of the, of the crop. We want, them, we want all the stocks to go up at the same time. That's a lot of volume. That's a lot of breadth. But when we see this separation happening, it's not uncommon for uh, those, those stocks that ran off to the moon turn around and now all of a sudden you, it looks like Wiley E. Coyote and the Roadrunner, <laughs> how low can we go? So that's why, you know, we're always anxious for people to see what kind of volatility can you accept? Because sometimes people love all of the upside volatility, but they don't like it when it, when it moves against them. And I think we can agree savvy investors hate losses more than they love gains. So they're more yeah. interested in limiting their losses. And, and that's what so, we want. So uh, what kind of time frame should you be looking at investing now? You know, because long term, you know, sounds dangerous, right? Well, I mean, you know, yeah, some of these things are always, what's the definition of long-term? And the way we look at it is long-term is lifetime. <laughs> and mm-hmm. if you're 65, uh, we uh, we believe, we plan as though we expect you to live to age 100. So we want to see what needs to happen so that, you know, there's a significant other, uh, both uh, a couple, that both parties can get to 100 and and both of them can see the kind of income that they need. That's the question. How can we make sure this income is very consistent? Uh, and with traditional retirement accounts, we have to recognize that uh, the withdrawals must be taken and the withdrawals must increase thanks to the Informal Revenue Service every year for the rest of your life. So, you know, it might be three, four percent when you're in your 70s, stick around to your 90s. It might be north of eight percent. And every year that withdrawal rate just creeps up a little bit and there's there's no way you can you can stop it from a traditional retirement account. So right. it makes sense to look at how can I uh, build the portfolio differently than when I was younger. Uh, you know, there were two 50 percent losses in the same decade. Well, if you were making contributions, that was a wonderful thing. But if you were taking withdrawals, that was a terrible thing. <laughs> right. So it all depends on where you are, what you're trying to get accomplished, really irrespective of age. But uh, we want to make sure people figure out what it is they're trying to do and maybe design their portfolios so that the portfolio actually performs within their limitations. You know, if you're if the market's off 20 or 30 in 2022 and you said you could live with a 12 percent loss, but your account was down 10 percent. OK. What do they say, right? If you buy yourself in a ditch, stop digging. You yeah. stopped 10. You, you, you didn't go to your, your limited 12. I, I, well, I would say that's good. And you didn't get to, uh, to 20 or 30 on a million bucks. That's what, two, $300,000, just like that. You, you didn't want to go there and you didn't. And if the money had been where it was before, you would have gone to being off 20 or 30%. All right. Well, it sounds like interesting times are ahead, John. Uh, oh, yeah. Tell us. How do we find you? How do we connect with you on the web? Yes. Well, we're at uh, Westlake Financial Advisors or YB Poor. Either way, we'll connect to our site. Our phone number is 805-495-2077. And love talking with folks about what it is they're afraid of and what they'd like to prepare so that, you know, as I say, uh, we can uh, we can avoid running out of money before we run out of time. Yeah, that's the important thing. Everyone's great fear. Hey, got a question for John and myself. Shoot me an email. KL at KerryLutz.com. We'll get you an answer quick. You'll find a link to John's site in the show notes of this interview on FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. We just ask when you're there, please sign up for a free newsletter. John, always a pleasure. Thanks for coming by. My pleasure, Kerry. See you next time. Thanks for listening to Kerry Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.